and I'm going to make some rolls. And she threw a little of this in, and she threw a little of that in, and I'm trying to remember what she threw in. But I made those rolls, and I ate every one of them. <laughs> there were six of them. <laughs> I didn't think I could ever make a roll, you understand? And kill a chicken. I wasn't raised on a farm. a bloody mess that day on the cross. If you saw the passion of Christ, I only watched it one time. I could never watch it anymore. I bought it thinking I'm going to watch it again, and I haven't played it yet. Everybody was arrested in that theater. I'll never forget it. They didn't get to drink the drinks or eat the popcorn. I didn't even hear the chairs go up when they left. They were being careful to put the chairs up. They didn't want to dishonor God. Come on. I'm not trying to make you feel like you're not important. This is just an honor you want to give God. You understand? There's, there's this honor, this reverence, this God, this Jesus. This same Jesus is coming down your road, honey. He knows all the roads, all the streets. Where all the lampposts are. I know because I used to pray and it was just prayers. And now I'm saying things that I didn't know was in my heart. Good things in the vocabulary. Jesus, what a wonder you are. What a wonder. And so suddenly, Richard, I can hardly read the word anymore without crying. I sit down beside my bed and try to read the word and I start crying. Three or four times I came out trying to read the word. Because it's come alive. And we were singing when we came in alive, alive forevermore. And what I'm saying to you, you can usually know how the service is going to end by the first song. It's a river. It's a river. He said it goes to the throne of God. There is a river. And you can get lost in your tears and your love sometimes. I don't, I don't really like, these are personal things. Sometimes I get to thinking about, I mean, this happens often. By my bed at night, and I think I'm going to go to bed at 12. At 2.30, I'm still sitting there thinking about it and talking to him. Where did the time go? Because I'm hoping he'll say something. I don't care. Correct me. Do whatever you want to say. Let me hear your voice. So he says, in the song of Solomon, let me hear your voice. Well, he just heard it. I was just praising him. No, he always wants more praise and more of your love. And listen, there's nothing downtown that has your conversation like he has your conversation. There's nothing in the window. There's nothing in the stock market. There's nothing in that new car that has all those buttons that you don't know how to use yet. Understand that who was that movie star that was the governor of California? Snickelbottle, what was his name? Warren or something. He had a car that he cleaned his buttons with an ermine, ermine fur brush to get all down, you know, around the little buttons. What do you think the Lord is using on you around your buttons? <laughs> I think I'll do a little refining here and a little refining there. And if you could see it, you might ask him, can I go home today? I did that recently. My friend calls me long distance. Have you been asking the Lord to go home? I said, yes, he has. Well, he gave me a message for you. He told you he's not taking you home now, so stop asking. <laughs> She calls me all the time with those messages. <laughs> Get with somebody that's spiritual, honey. You'll hear from God if you don't hear. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you that's the way we are. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I know. I said, I just got so caught and so lost. Just thinking about him. He said, your mind is kept in perfect peace. You stayed upon him. 
peace. Do you know the fruit of that's righteousness? And righteousness is what he's wanting in this nation. Amen. He'll exalt a nation. He'll exalt a church. He'll exalt a family. He'll exalt a people. Right standing with God. You say, well, where are you coming from? Job was talking about where God came from. Anybody ever read that? He said he came from demon. Well, I mean, who can describe what he meant by that? When you begin to come from God and not from anybody else's thinking, you'll have teachings. People won't understand you. They'll think you're swirling. You're strange. I'm not an airhead, but I know some people that are, and that's not a nice thing to say. Know what's going on in the spirit realm. Know that he walks, he says, in the cool of the day, he walks in the morning, he walks in the evening, he walks with me, and he talks with me. <clears throat> And he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we chapter of Proverbs. Boy, did she have a river. Read her story. She's busy all the time. Her husband safely trusted her at the gates. Listen, I'm on this journey of this love affair with the Lord. Just, it just suddenly, I tell Dee I'm getting rid of things. I said, because we can't take them to heaven. So let somebody else be blessed with them here on earth. You understand? Just bless somebody else with them. Can't take it back. Up. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend. I see some of you this morning. You're like these beautiful oak trees. I just saw that. Two or three of you right here. And you had jewels hanging off of your tree like rubies and emeralds. I just saw that in sapphire. The tree was gold. The leaves were gold. 
What's happening? He said, you're planted by the waters. Your roots go deep. Did you have a dog named Thomas? Yes. His picture is hanging on my refrigerator. Oh. But I know I'm going to see, see him in heaven. No, but I know. I only had one dog, and I couldn't get another one. I felt like I betrayed him. I thought, Lord, I don't know. Is this foolish or not? His name was Smoocher. He was kissable, is what the vet said. He was a kissable dog. Yes. He was so loving. And one day my Jewish friend said, what does it mean when you see purple on the dog? I said, whose dog? She said, yours. She was visiting me. The Lord put the glory on my dog. Now listen, a lot of people make fun of me. One person said, why don't you get him to open the Bible and read it? The Lord was comforting me with the dog, not them. But what I'm saying, when he died, Listen, you're not going to believe this. I missed him so much. And I didn't want to get out of bed one morning. And he came by to bark her three times to wake me up. I said, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Now, all people don't think God would do these things, but he will. He'll do things that Habakkuk said, even if someone would tell you, you wouldn't believe it. Have you read that scripture? He said, so I'm getting up on my high place to see what else he has to say. Now, it's not a dog's gospel, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, you know, that I had my time with the dog. Take this graciously. Some people don't have times with people like that. They clean up behind the dog. Doesn't bother them. But they have people that come with a suitcase full of problems. And you gotta take it off. You gotta work with them to help them unpack it. Whoa, did I just say something? Unpack it. Get rid of what you don't need. You told me one day, ladies, Ruth Heflin said to me, if I can just get Sister Carney and I to put everything in her sack, suitcase when she goes somewhere. Ouch. So one morning I said, Lord, I need, I need, I need. I said it three times. He said, you need to put three dresses in a suitcase and go up to Jerusalem. Well, I didn't have the money for the trip, but it wasn't the trip, honey. It was the three dresses. Did I hear him right? And I said, does that mean the one I wear there and the one I wear home? I'm going to bargain with God. Come on. So I decided to obey him and just take three. I got pictures. You should see the glory on those pictures. I'm telling you, when you obey the Lord, the glory that comes, the sanctification that comes, we're talking about separation. Separation. Separated of the hell. Call by him. It's the greatest calling you can ever have. No phone call you'll ever get from anybody will be like that calling from the Lord. For ye are a chosen people. Why do they not like Israel? Because she's a holy chosen people. She's a priesthood. She's not like other nations. And you're the same. Are you listening to me? You're the same. He parallels it with who you are in him. Called out. Do you know what I mean by called out? If they were giving away roses, you were hoping they're going to call your name. When they're giving away gifts, you remember, you remember when you first got saved and maybe you don't remember, you didn't have much money. So they're giving away a few free things. And so it's 
Mother's Day. And I didn't know where I'd fit in and get anything. And they're giving away boxes of candy. And I didn't have the money to even buy one candy bar. True story. How am I going to get a box of candy? You gotta let the Lord show you how you're gonna get your box of candy. It's Mother's Day. Every year went by and I never got a box of candy. Well, I wasn't gonna have any more babies. My granddaughters weren't producing yet. And I'm saying, I'm gonna get a box of candy. Did you know the Lord says he is a way that no man has entered into yet. Did you know he said that? He said, if you find it. And I told this story to my friend. So we're gonna sing a wonderful song so they can dance. We're gonna do it in the minors. We're gonna have a wonderful beat with it in just a minute. And so Mother's Day came and I thought, I won't get a box. There's too many people ahead of me. Somebody, the old, it was a box for the oldest mother. For the one that just, you know, for the grandmother, the one that just, that had the latest baby and the most children. It was eight boxes of candy. And it was my favorite kind. And I'm sitting there trying to figure out how to get that box of candy. Now I was going to share it. But I thought, if they're giving it away, I might as well get some. Are you listening? And my daughter-in-law called me. She said, I'm in labor, and I'm on my way to the hospital. <laughs> and she had that baby in two hours. Uh -huh. And I got a box of candy right. for being the newest grandmother. God has your times coming on, <laughs> on his chart. He has your times on his page and what he's going to do. Now, he doesn't do it every day and all the time, and here's why. If we'd get used to it and we wouldn't honor him and we wouldn't be exploding with joy like we should because we got a credit card, we got the money, we can just get it. Now, well, honey, there's no fun in that. The wonder of it is when God does it and he remembers you. <laughs> it's wonderful when people remember you, but how about when God remembers you? So it was Whitman's sample. You say, well, what are you saying to you? Well, I died later at a funeral. I really did. And this man came to see me. He's an artist. And he had a vision while I'm dead. And he saw an angel bringing me a box of Whitman's, Whitman's sample candy. And somebody came and brought me a box of Whitman's sample candy when I rose from the dead. Come on. God remembers everything, everything. These are the icons of your life. Come on, Da Vinci didn't paint, The God's still working on it. <laughs> and the colors are not quite bright yet, but you're gonna see that he's gone. And everything he does is perfect and wonderful and beautiful, come on. Can you get a little bit excited about the Lord? Come on, come on, come on, come on, shut the book down. We need some seeds from heaven, not what we planned on the schedule. But suddenly the God comes down in the midst of you and he begins to orchestrate the service. And every person in that service has got a part. And suddenly they're going to be on the platform and the curtain's going to be pulled back. And you're going to get a new view of what you look like. Hallelujah. You're going to get a new view of what heaven is like. You're going to get a new view. Get these out, please. I hope there's 30 people here. You're going to get a new view. I need one. A new view. How many want a new view? Yes. A new view. A new view. This is the word of the Lord to the church right now. Right now, this is what the Lord is saying. This word was given in 2019 by Bobby Conference. But right now, this is what the Lord is saying. A revelation. God wants you to have a revelation of what he wants to do in the church. He said there must be a righteous revolution 
A revolution of righteousness. Can you see that? Honey, they did, you, they, you won't see this on television. <laughs> but you'll see it in a vision. Glory to God. This happened in, in, in November of 2019. And God spoke to me at the same time. Woke me up. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I was so caught up. Peggy? Is it Peggy? I was so caught up. I get out of the bed and go down to my friend's room. I said, are we going to court? She said, what? I woke her up. I said, are we going to court? She said, I don't think so. I said, I just heard the word tell me. Did I promise to tell the truth? Hope truth, nothing but the truth. And somebody gave me this three days later, this word right here. This is what the Lord said to me also. In other words, that we're going to be willing to stand on the Lord's side yes. all the time. All the time. Doesn't matter how difficult things are. You're on the Lord's side. You're not going to sit back and be quiet because that means you're on the left if, you, if you're quiet. Do you hear what I'm saying? you got to say, I don't agree. If you don't want to talk about it, say, I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. That's not where I am. Do we have enough? Thank you, Jesus. I want you to keep this. Don't lose it. You just read this word. And I've, told, I've talked about this many times. He was, he was in a dream and in a courtroom. It was an experience. He said he heard the gravel hit the judge's bench. But his voice came like a blinding light. And that's how it will come. A blinding light. It'll, it'll just dissipate all the darkness in every direction. And when I read this, I thought, yes, that's what he was saying to me. And the three witnesses were the individual, the church, and the nation. This nation has got to come back to God. Amen. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Come back to me. Do you solemnly swear? That's what the Lord said to me to tell the truth. The whole truth is enough but the truth. There's that mental sentence. Listen, how would you like to have a visitation with all this in it? Try, I mean, yeah, you're trying to describe it to the Lord. Are you prepared to present your case? We're going to present to the Lord who we are. And so I, I check myself by the word often. Lord, am I living in this word? Is this word missing from my life? Do I have faith that was once presented to the saints? I don't dare ask him, do I want to suffer the way they suffered? No, I don't. But he knows how much suffering you can stand. And he said, if you want to reign with me, you're going to have to suffer some things. And it's hard to part from a lot of things that's, who, that's a part of who we are. But then we find out who we are. You understand? Who we are. So the first thing that happens when you start asking the Lord who you are, he said, yeah, I'll show you who you are. So he gives you a little test pattern. He allows something to happen. And you thought, Lord, I didn't know that was part of the test pattern. You know what grace does? It brings security. It brings great security. The church needs security today. Knowing who he is. And if we're listening today. You say, this is a prayer meeting. Yes. It's like one you've never experienced before. And I'm trying to find it in the Bible. We sing. We worship. We see visions. We declare our visions. We share with one another. We call out words of knowledge. Grace means surety, means growth, means submission. But here's what he said. Wherefore also, chapter 2 of 1 Peter, verse 6. 
It is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believeth, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient to the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. A stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. Look at me, he's going to describe you. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous, look at that word, light. Marvelous light. You know what happens in light? Everything's revealed. Everything is shown. I don't know, maybe that's why they turned the lights down in the church. I'm sorry to say that. Turn the lights on. Turn them on. People like darkness because it hides their sin. We had our our sound men to turn the lights off around the booth in the back in our church. My pastor steps off the platform and goes all the way to the back. And he said to the people in the sound booths, we are not in a bar. Turn the lights on. You know, sometimes we need to have the truth so we won't do it anymore. Amen. Tell the truth. This is what it's like. You're wondering what it's like. This is, compare it to what it's like. And the Bible talks about jots and tittles, and he talks about tears and spots and wrinkles. Spots and wrinkles, honey, that's for old people, Lord. <laughs> you get wrinkles from sitting down. He said, keep yourself unspotted from the world. You, you now listen, I, I, I want to explain something to you that will help you. I had a dear friend that I hadn't seen her for a while. And we were very close when she left, but when she came back, she kept her distance. And the Lord spoke to me and said, the way got too straight for her. You know, a lot of people don't talk about these things. The way got too straight. You remember he put Paul on the street called straight. And then he said, I, he said, the way is now. And then Kevin Zadai said, it's narrow if you can find it. I thought, oh, I like that. It's narrow. He's so, it's because he's so holy. Holy. And it's like that new baby when you first get it. My daughter-in-law had, had two from her previous marriage. And so when she married my son, we had a new baby. And my son called me to come and bond with the baby in Canada. I thought she was never going to let me hold that baby. Must us give it a bath. So they wanted to go out and eat. And they let me keep the baby. And they call me every five minutes. And I didn't enjoy the baby. I said, Robert, are you okay? He said, yeah, mom, why? I said, well, I think if I took care of you, I can take care of this baby. <laughs> let me enjoy it. Okay, that baby is precious. You understand? You remember your first baby? You didn't want anybody to breathe on it. You didn't know if you could bear let them hold it when they came to your house. They might drop it. Because it's precious. You understand? He's precious. And so, one day I did something that I shouldn't have done more than once. And the Bible says, Godly sorrow works repentance. In other words, you're sorry for hurting God. 
this is where you got to get to where you're sorry. Lord, I shouldn't have done that. And I never used to repent. And I used to stay awake half the night all the time and didn't know what it was. You know, I'd be bad during the day, didn't go to bed, didn't repent. I went like this for a number of years with no sleep. Not knowing the problem was, I, all I had to do was say, Lord, I'm sorry. I wasn't sorry in my heart, you understand? I wasn't repenting. Wait till you repent and you cry. And then you want to go to the store and spend $100 on the person that you're hurt. You ever been that place? I have. I'm so sorry. You know, you don't want, don't want to do that again. I don't want to do that again. But of course we go do something else again. But he said, you're a royal priesthood. Which in times past were not a people. He's talking about Israel. They, they weren't known. Nobody knows who you are. But you know what? You're a hidden people. Hidden in the glory right now. A hidden people. The world shall know. A hidden people, God's glory shall show. A hidden people, who's waited until His love has come, their life to fill. I'm trying to tell you, get so excited. And when you do that, I'm telling you, just when you think you're about to rest or go to sleep, all of a sudden, you feel something hits you like lightning. And he says, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. Oh, is that what you're doing? You asked me to do it. I'm feeling you. I'm going to feel you now. And then this fresh excitement comes. How many want some freshness? How many of you have sort of been bored and forlorn and lonely? Come on, I have. I told the Lord I was bored and I needed some something new and he said, Phoenix, Arizona. 22 years, 23 years ago. Phoenix, Arizona. And so he brings me out of here in the winter time. And I thought it was paradise until summer came. <laughs> and I had no money to go back home. Are you listening to me? He said, I'm doing something in Arizona that's going to touch the rest of the country. Yes. Come on. Yes. You better claim it for the Lord. That's right here. Don't go anywhere right now. Come on. He's going to do something in you. You're going to take it to the rest of the world. He said, the last shall be first. Are you kidding me? He said, the last shall be first. Oh, she gave me a camel. Oh, look at this. The Lord told me I was a camel coming out here. <laughs> oh, does the saddle come on? Almost. Oh, it does. Look. He told me I was a camel. Look at her. She remembered. The Lord said to me, Ruth Evelyn gave me a prophetic word. You're my camel. I'm sending to Arizona. Well, she said to me, she, she hardly ever gave us any visions. She said, it's not a very lofty vision. I said, just give me the vision. Nobody's given me anything like me in the spirit, right? She said, I see you're like a camel. Well, that day before that, I'd gone down to the tabernacle. It was open. And I'd laid on the floor for three days for God to speak to me. And he didn't show me anything for two whole days. And then I get up and she gives me the word. You're a camel that's going to Arizona. And Chuck Pierce said, the camels are coming. Well, right here's one of them. That means you got a lot of water. And you can stand the dry heat. Come on, you can stand. It's a desert ship. Come on. You got something precious on you, you're going to give away. Look at this. Look at that gold and silver camel. Look at that. I got some gold and silver now. Oh, yeah. And I said to her, was it two humps or one when she told me this? Find out if you got two humps or one. But she said it was not a very lofty vision. I don't care if the Lord wants to tell me I look like a haystack. Tell me something. 
Do you get it? Anybody know what I'm saying? You want God to tell you something? Lord, tell me something. Yes. And so he tells you something <laughs> from really what you wanted to hear. <laughs> but it's something. You got something to work with. Look at these people. They're the people of God, is what it says. And the pastor are not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Abstain from freshly lust, which war against the soul. We're going to keep on going. Because they're the people that have lined up, they're called lively stones. Are you a lively stone? Ask the Lord which jewel you are. He'll tell you. He told me my heart belonged to Judah. I'm trying to remember what color Judah was on that breastplate. Anybody remember? Green. What is it? Emerald. Emeralds? Oh, Lord, I got to have emerald. I don't have an emerald. Come on. That's how you get it. That's how you get the emerald. It was an emerald. Oh, listen. He spoke to me one morning. He said, Ruth, your heart belongs to Judah. I didn't know. I said, Lord, I don't know any Judah. But I remember hearing a scripture somewhere. But Judah means praise. You know what that means? That means that your praise is like a plow. And it's plowing up the ground all the time. It's turning things over. It's turning the soil. But it's the quickest way when you're worshiping the Lord to hear his voice. To get answers. Hallelujah. And he loves those gates. He said, lift your heads, are you gates? How does that scripture go? We love the gates of, what was it? Zion more than all the gates. Zion. Mm -hmm. More than all the gates of Jerusalem. Who was it? Jacob. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. He loved the gates of Zion. Well, who was Zion? That's the church. That's Israel. He loves your voice. He loves your singing. Some of you can become greater songbirds. If you don't know how to sing, get in front of the mirror and sing to the mirror. I'm just telling you, Ruth said, if you don't have a dance, get Brother Mary dance. If you don't like it, get a new dance. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, this, this is not religion, honey. This is spirit. I got out of the box. We had an Australian brother to come to our church. When he got through with our ministry, I wish you could have been there. It was greater than what happened up in Toronto. People were crawling on the ground trying to get away from this man. He was laying hands on us. Only 35% of his heart worked. They told him he was going to die any day. And he got up and talked about the love of Jesus. And the next thing I know, he's standing on top of a platform like this. And I'm still trying to figure out how he got up there. He jumped down and he began to come with his microphone and moved it all around us. And every time he took it down his side of it, zip! He saw it in a vision. Something went through us like electricity. Every person he did that to. Honey, I lined up three times. And one day to get that microphone. We hadn't had any thrilling experiences. You know, so we could get kissed and feel excited. Wait till the Lord kisses you. Woo, it'll run through you like electricity. You'll be another person. You'll be telling everybody how wonderful this guy is. It would have been good if he had brought life. It would have been good if he had brought peace. But he put laughter in my soul. Ha, 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 ha. Whoa, ho, oh, oh. ho. Where's my ha, 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 ha? Hallelujah. We're going to demonstrate this thing. So that when you pray, all you have to do is pray the mind of the Lord. And not begging and pleading with God to do something, but you're pleading the mind of the Lord. Lord, this day do so and so, and it happens. I'm telling you how to get, you, how to pray in other realms of the heavens. I have a friend. Her mother just had played golf with Donald Trump down in Florida. She's very wealthy. You'd all know her if I called her name. Everyone in this room would know her. 
And God had me to mentor her for years and took her out of my life. Suddenly I get a text. Here I am, we're visiting Donald Trump in Florida. They're wealthy people. And her mother comes back to her right after that day. Mother kind of thought she was strange because she was in that Pentecostal camp with those Pentecostal people. She come to visit that Pentecostal camp that looked so poor, honey, it needed an overhaul. But it was rich in the glory of the Lord. You see, the tabernacle, if you've studied it, had badger skins on it. Do you know why? So the enemy wouldn't bother it. They thought it was nothing there. You gotta get to the place, listen, where you're protected by the badger skins. And her mother couldn't believe that she was in that camp. She tried to get her out of there and no amount of persuasion would get her out. Her mother wept and cried and cried. And I said, it's okay, honey, she'll come back. Don't worry, she'll come back. She said, I certainly hope so. Her mother couldn't believe that she was there in the ruins of that camp. Well, her mother just called her and said, listen, I never believed in what was gonna happen with our finances and our economy, but I do now. I can't tell you everything. She gave her the biggest, biggest credit card that you and I would ever see in our lives. A quarter of a million. Hmm. Go bless the church. Go bless your friends. Celebrate. Have a good time before anybody else gets it. Come on. He said, the wealth, come on. The wealth of the sinner is not a sinner exactly. It's a person that doesn't know how to spend it. Because he told those men that had the one and three and five, remember? He gave them their inheritance, really. And remember one, he, did, he buried his. And he called him a wicked man. We're wicked when we don't know what to do with our money. We don't know how to spend what God has given to us. So God is going to allow you to have certain things and you won't know what they're for. And you know that are not really for you. Anybody know what I'm saying? You had beautiful things given you. didn't match you. It wasn't your color. So your servant that he's given it to to do something with it. That you, he told me this morning, I want my people to be successful. So she had a day with Donald Trump and he shared some things with her. Now, who would ever thought I was going to get a hold of that information? <laughs> I've been asking God what's going on. But God knows where I live and he knows where you live and he knows the right people to contact. Yes. That you'll have everything you need and you won't be wandering out in the wilderness somewhere. But you'll hear the trumpet when it blows. Are you listening? It's about to blow. I'm telling you, the Lord is about to return. He's about to come back. It's not going to get any better. But that lady's got grace. Does that say grace on your shirt? Yep. What does that amazing say? Amazing grace. grace. Look at that. Grace. <laughs> this is what we're talking about this morning. It's grace. So you be as foolish as you want to be. And don't worry about what people think. If you want to dance on your head, you do it. If you want to do cartwheels, you do it. If you want to run all around the room, there's a time to do it. Because you are releasing the ark of the Lord to come in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of people, they're trying to think there's something wrong with them. Go, I should take them out. And God's trying to bring in his glory. Yeah. Yes, some people don't know how to handle it. You ever held they said it's a hot potato? <laughs> but when you learn of the Lord, when you learn of his ways, when you learn of his secrets, then you know what to do. You know how to handle the glory when it comes in. I'm giving you a little sermonette with glory this morning. It's the presence of the Lord is going to make the difference. We're not going to have a new revelation. Yeah, you're going to ooh and ah. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. No, wait till his presence comes. Oh, my goodness. And you feel it, it's like a cold chill, but it isn't. You know what I'm saying? It just comes down on you. You think, will you do that again? You're hoping he'll do it again. <laughs> oh, Jesus, would you? But he doesn't. He holds you at arm's length until he gets you closer. Until he can trust you with the riches of his glory. You understand? He'll bless people with finances if he can trust them with it. 
Current means currency. When you get into the currents of heaven, the rhythms of heaven, the blessings will flow in your life. It will flow. I'm telling you, you can take it to the bank. It'll flow. Yes. It'll burn. It'll churn. Thank you, Lord, for the prophets and the gospel. Lord, thank you that they searched diligently. And they prophesied of the grace that would come. That nothing, absolutely nothing is too difficult or too hard. Lord, we're going to have another experience with you. We're going to think differently. We're going to see you as our husband. Not as Lord like Sarah, but as our husband. Our husband, are you hearing me? My husband. When I used to ride on the airplanes, it seemed all these men always seemed to sit beside me. Are you married? And I'd always say yes, even when I wasn't. What does your husband do? Oh, he's in eternal affairs. Where does he work? I said, all over the world. He goes all over the world. You get to see him. I said, no, he travels a lot, but I talk to him often. <laughs> well, what does he do exactly? I said, he gets into the heart of every person that will let him in. They can't get off the plane. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? It's more than what we know, honey. It's not just going to church and bringing your ties and saying a little bit, dancing a minuet and saying a little prayer. Woo! There's something in my bones, honey, that's got to get out. And it's called fire, Jeremiah said. It's like fire showed up in my bones. That would be the time for some of you to jump up and dance at that Hallelujah. moment. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And so I got a word from the Lord. And the Lord said, I kind of knew this because I knew my preaching had gotten different. He said, your job is to awaken the church. Now listen, I haven't gotten my trumpet out yet. What are you going to do when I get my trumpet out? My granddaughter plays a trumpet. I don't know if she'll let me use it. And a saxophone. And it's bigger than she is. Yes. She wants to make a joyful noise. Yes. You want to make a joyful noise? Yes. Now, Lord, we're not going to beg you for Washington, D.C. We're going to ask you to send a joyful noise yes. to Washington. Yes. Come on. Yes. You've got to believe what you pray right now. Yes. Send a joyful noise. Send it with yes. me a joyful noise. Joyful noise. And Lord, we wouldn't mind if you let it be like it was on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Yeah. Let it be sounded all over the city what you're doing. Amen. Let Nancy Pelosi, what are some of the other names? Yeah. You were calling them out this morning. Oh, Maxine Waters. Yeah. Maxine Waters, who else? Aaron the Jewish Diane lady. Einstein. Einstein, let them have an upper room experience. Yes. Come on, did you believe God can do that? Yes. They'll get they'll think they're having a hiccup. So they won't know what it is. They're trying to mistake it. And they're trying to explain it. Come on, you've got to believe for greater things. We're praying in the wrong direction. We gotta pray that God will glow in. Up the aisle and down the aisle and across the seats. So he said to us in our prayer meeting one day, we had had a like a celebration. It was like a circus that morning. And suddenly, uh, the boy that had been the worst that week, we, I mean, he'd given us a headache, we stood up to prophesy. We didn't think whether he could prophesy or not. I did. I didn't think it was really fit to do it. But when the word came out of him, I knew he was fit to. The Lord said, I'm in this place tonight, uh, and I'm going to go in one aisle and down the other and by every seat, uh, and you're going to feel like a whirlwind is in this place. Uh, and the Lord spoke to my friend Michelle, uh, and the Lord said, yeah, and I'm going to put noses on all of you like you're like clowns. Uh, and the Lord spoke to my friend and said, I'm going to put the biggest one on the pastor. <laughs> Nobody gets words like this. Is this prophecy? Would God talk like this? Honey, he would, could say anything. you got to trust him when he says it. And suddenly, 
I don't know what happened. I closed my eyes and a wind came in. I'm telling you the whole truth. And we had three tripods and people were laying across the tripods when I opened my eyes. And the pastor was laying up in the artificial plants up in the corner. And another girl was sitting cross legged facing the wall behind the platform. And I said, what happened? What happened? And people were speaking in a new tongue that I hadn't heard before. And my pastor was laid up in those artificial plants speaking in tongues, honey. We had never seen him like that before. Come on. How many want a new look? Come on. They're not going to do it, but you're going to get your makeup changed. Come on. God's going to give you a look that's not made up. Come on. He's going to give you a look that's going to made up mind. He's going to give you a look that you've looked into his face. Into his counsel. Come on. You've looked into the hidden things of God. Yes, and he's changed. He's changed. How many want that? You want that change. And you want it so bad you don't care. You'll go to another state. You'll go to another city. Don't leave your husband. Take him with you. That's why I'm here. I pulled up in front of my house with a U-Haul and 60 cents in my pocket. I sold two pieces of antique furniture to get there. And the Lord told me that, Penny. He said, a pastor from this city all the way across the United States called me from Dulles Airport. Can you meet me here? I got a word from the Lord at got to be at McDonald's. 120 miles, honey, 240 miles I drove. Get the word. The Lord said, I want you to go to Arizona and you're going to sell some precious things to get there. Well, the only thing I had precious was the Lord. And all I heard of the word was precious things, sister. I'm telling you, I, I didn't, I, I missed some of the word. He prophesied 20 minutes over me. Pat Macero from this city. Because he saw us here. We'd been here just a few months before. He came all the way to inquire who we were. We were right up here at this Baptist church. It was Baptist on Glendale, right on the corner. He said, can you meet me in Dulles? I got a word from the Lord. Would you go? If Jonah showed up, would you go? If he showed up in your Nineveh and said, I got a word for you. He went to Nineveh and said, I got a word for you. You got 40 days to get straightened out here. And the cows and chickens and everything fasted. Everything fasted. The Lord wants you to come to Arizona is what he said. I'm your camel, like it or not. Yes. I don't look like one. <laughs> and he said, you're going to get rid. You'll have to sell some precious things. Well, I didn't know that was going to be my money to get here. You understand? I said, what precious things? He said, do you have any antiques? God's in the closet again. Yeah. In the closet. Yeah. I had two pieces that I had acquired because I'd laid hands on the lawyer and his wife and delivered them from their torment. And I got the antique furniture. And I shared it with other people. I only got part of it. But it was the most beautiful blue you've ever seen. It was Italian. I'm going to have an Italian villa in heaven. I'm telling you right now. And I sold that and came out here and the truck parked in front of the house for 60 cents. And it wasn't even my house. I'm moving in with somebody else. And I'm here to tell you God moved them out and gave me the house. Gave me the house. Did you hear what I said? Gave me the house. And I'm still there. And it was the worst neighborhood in Phoenix. And the Lord said to me, you're not moving out until you get these people saved. Come on, you need to hear these things about where you are. Yeah. Drugs, honey. The whole, the whole place was in drugs. And the city began to send me letters in the mail. We're coming out to clean up your area. Are you hearing me? They cleaned it up with sidewalks. Walls. You should have seen it before. Didn't even have any sidewalks. All the dirt. No lights. You've been out there. I haven't moved because it's convenient. It's cheap. Hallelujah. I fixed it up. And the police aren't there anymore because the people got saved or driven out. Come on, that was my Canaan. You gotta be, you gotta know that where you are, God has put you there to do something. And if you have to get up at night and build a bridge across the street to get into their house, you do it. 60 cents. Well, read Isaiah 60, rise and shine, the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I'm telling you, it's more, honey, it's more. 
You've got to get it in you. You've got to open up to God until it fills you from the top of your head. And so the Shunammite woman describes his curly hair and what he looks like. And then John sees him. Hallelujah. He's got feet like brass. He's got hair like gold. He's got eyes and his voice sounded like a trumpet behind him. I tell you, he said, I want you to subscribe the greatness of who I am. never be without anything to eat or a car to ride in or a place to lay your head. <laughs> He's Jehovah. Hallelujah. Jireh. The Lord our provider. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory Hallelujah. 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 Listen, honey, I'm telling you, don't look for ways to prosper. Just love him and you'll prosper. Pour yourself out upon him. He'll show you there's no end to his mercy and his goodness and what he'll do for you. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? He'll show you of his mercy and his goodness. And you won't have to be, he told me, he said, because you have not run after man, I'm going to show you my glory. That's what he said to me. I never tried to run after people that were in the limelight. I didn't have anything to give them to begin with. But go after him. You got all to give to him. All of your love. Yeah. All that you have. Yeah. Give it unto him. I tell you, God wants you to know him in full measure. John said, I saw him. He tried to bowl him at all. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I got a little burn right there on my hand. One in my stove without a pothole over the other night. See, it hurts. It's just a little burn. But listen, he's a fire. <laughs> It won't burn you, it'll consume you. <laughs> Come on, it consume you. You want to be consumed. Consumed about this God that the Hebrew children, uh, it was in the fire. Remember the men put him in there and said, didn't we put three men in that fire? I see four. Come on, four. Four. Four and there's room for more. There's room for you. And God's about to release power that you have never experienced. This is what I'm saying to you. Power that you're going to lay hands on people and arms and limbs are going to grow back. We've seen a little, but he'll only let you see a little. And I couldn't figure this out for a long time. Why could we only see a little? Because uh, it would kill you if we saw too much. You understand? If you heard the voice of the Lord too much, you couldn't take it. I'm being honest with you. You couldn't. It's a love that's overwhelming. A love, when he talks about love, we haven't understood that love yet. The measure of it, the depth of it, the greatness of it. That you want to give him everything. You don't care what it is he wants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm at a place, and I know you are too. I want more. And I know there's things I've got to let go of. It's not, it's not the giving up of the money and the clothes and all that. That's, that's part of it, you understand? But it's just whatever he wants to do. You understand? Whatever he wants to do. Let him do it. We wrote a song once. I'm going to let go and let God do what he wants to do with me. I'm going to let go and let God do what he wants to do with me. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going into Rosses recently. And a man is outside. He needs money. He's carrying his blankets and his pillows. They were as black as the ground. And I didn't. I don't know if I had a large bill or what. I said, if you'll wait here until I come back out, I'll bring you some money. Well, he went out there. And I get in my car. And I didn't think about going home and start crying. I said, Lord, I don't know where he is. What happened to him? I don't know. So I looked at all of the, I drove all around it, and I found him in front of tar targets. And then I lost him again. Somebody got in front of me in the car. I said, Lord, I don't know where he is. I can't find this man. I promised him I'd give him some money. I'm crying by this time. And I finally found him. And I said, why'd you leave the place? I told you to stay there. I was going to bring you something back out. And he stopped. He said, my name is Paul. Just like that. Mm -hmm. My name is Paul. 
and he followed me. I'm trying to leave, and he's following me in my car. And I thought, is this an angel? Or is this a beggar? He said, now I can go get myself something to eat. I think I gave him $10. Listen, I used to just give a little because you know what they're going to do with them. Trust God. Just give it to him. Trust God. Betty Hinn said that. Don't be selfish. So he could go over to that place where they have muffins and all that, you know. I said, you have enough to go to the Chinese place. Go have a meal. Then I wanted to go home because I had a new bag and a new blanket and a new pillow and bring it back to me. You understand what I'm saying? You can't take care of the whole world, but you can take care of what he gives you. Amen. These experiences that you have in God is what likes you. That God is going to do something so great. So great. And so, I'll tell this. Closing. We're singing a new song here. And I'm singing, Rejoice is for Rejoice. Rejoice is for Rejoice. And I'm naming all these things that God's going to do for Israel. And all of a sudden, the song changed. And I was going to say something else, and I thought, that didn't sound right. That's not God. But I think I had to say it. This is before the moons came out, the book on the four moons. I began to sing, Rejoice, Israel, Rejoice. God's about to give you the moon. I just saw it again. Now, I didn't know about the blood moons. In a little a month, John Hagee comes out with a book about the blood moons. But see, the moons were assigned to Israel. And he always did it on their feast days. He'd bring, and so I had a dream one night that I saw all the plants lined up, and it was on Passover. And an angel said to me, what do you see, sister? I said, oh, it's a beautiful sight. And I woke up, and I thought, I said the wrong thing to the angel. What was I supposed to say? But it was Passover. It was a sign in the heavens, you understand? And it was trying to tell me something was going to happen. So I, you know, I caught on, I caught that. You have to catch these things in your dreams. He said, I'm going to give you dreams and visions. There's just not, oh, I had a dream, and oh, God said. No, it's more than that, honey. He's unfolding, unmapping. He's, he's got a plan. And if we'll open up to him, you'll be a part of it. You'll be excited all the time. But I sang that song, remember? We got it on that tape. Rejoice, Israel. God's about to give you the moon. And we danced all over the screen. It was Israel's song. God was sitting there up. The whole world was going to look at her differently. Come on. Everybody's looking at her from afar, you know, because she's a strange people. I told a lady that in the shop the other day. She saw the star of David. I'm like, you Jewish? I said, no, but you are, aren't you? She said, yes. And I told her, I said, yeah, you're peculiar people. She said, what's that mean? I said, it means you're different. Oh. Well, I'm glad I said the right thing. Oh. 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 That was all she could take. Oh. You're different. You're different in this room today. Do you hear me? God has had, got his hand on you for great and marvelous things. And, and if you let him do it, honey, he'll put, listen, he's about to put a seal on you. He's about to put his mark on you. These last days, he's going to put a look on you. You belong to him. Great and mighty things. So we try to find the song for the moment in this place. And we're going to rejoice over Israel right now. And we're going to believe, listen, we're going to believe, you've got to listen to me. They're saying the word amen on the news now. They never said that before. Amen to that, they said the other day. I thought, where'd they come from? And they're saying spiritual things. I'm waiting for them to say, can we pray before we shut this program down? Come on. You got to let your faith get bigger. God's just waiting for somebody to identify with him. You say, what are you saying to me? I'm in, a, in Fry's grocery store. And a young man is waiting on me there on the register. I told you some of you this story. I said, I'm going to see just how this thing works. Lord, when I get up here in this line, I'm believing you to move upon him and for him to prophesy over me as I'm being waited on. You see my hand? He started waiting on me, and all of a sudden, out of his mouth comes a prophecy. And he went like this. 
Lady, I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, it didn't, you know, people were behind me. I, I couldn't say too much. I said, I know what happened. God just answered my prayer. You have power with God. Come on, you got to use it. You got to pour it out. Are you listening to me? You got to let it go. There's more inside of you, honey. You read what they asked to the Acts of the Apostles. Read how they tried that. They did eventually kill most of them, but they're not dead yet. Hallelujah. They're not going to die. That flesh will have to die. Receive the power of the living God in your life. You understand? And you'll go places where you're not even known. And suddenly they say, would you like to pray? Sister, do you have something to say? Do you have something you want to share? That's how, what happened to Kevin Zeta in this room. He came through that door back there. When he came through the door, he's like this. And I looked at him like fire was dripping. He fell three times before he sat right where you are, sister. And I said, do you have something you want to share? And remember, he fell right here and fell here again before he got up. Because he walked into the glory. He now had an anointing on him. And every time he came from then on, I said, what do you want to share? I gave him two hours to share whatever he wanted. Well, he got my book written. Are you listening to me? He wrote my book for me and paid for it off. About $10,000. Come on, then gave me the book. <laughs> Don't worry about trying to find somebody. Find Jesus in the midst of everything. He's working his will into your life. Your inheritance. Let it be an everyday occurrence. Are you listening to me? The people were after me for 30 years to write that book. My trip to Africa I was there eight months through 12 countries. I had a wonderful time. Met all the great preachers. Smith Wiggins was granddaughter. I had to work before I left you. I'm going to cause you to meet the next to can, the great people. Ray McCauley gave me an apartment. I had a day and a half with Reinhard Bunke. Who gets a day and a half with Reinhard Bunke? I did. It just stumbled into it. Stumbled into it. Come on, I'm telling you, there's more, honey. Don't be happy just coming to church and sitting down. Say, Lord, you speak. Yes, Richard, Lord. we're going to sing something. And the miners. Hallelujah, we're going to bless Israel. We bless you every Friday. Listen, we need to do it every day. We need to dance and sing for Israel every single day. He said, You shall prosper that love her and honor her and pray for her. How many of you know what I'm saying? The Lord told my pastor that I started blessing you when you started blessing Israel. So I want you to stand. We're going to just follow the Spirit. We're going to bless Israel. Now, I realize we're not praying like we thought we did, but we, but there was something in the heavens that wanted to come down this morning. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, there was a presence of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Wonderful presence of the Lord. He's making you in his likeness today. Yes, yes, he is. His features are coming upon you right now. The gifts are going to begin to work in dynamic ways. So, yes, there is. There's a newness. Is that afraid about that? You look like a new person. Oh, you've had miracles. Yes, raise your hands. They're going all around the world right now. Her back has been out, operation, it went south, but now she's going north. Hallelujah. God's given her miracles. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at her. She looked, yes. You look like a new person. You look 10 years younger than the last time I saw you. Whoa, come on. Why don't you go around this room and lay hands on everybody as we're dancing? Come on, that's the thing. Just go around the room and lay your hands on them. Just touch them and impart something into you. You don't have to pray. Just touch them. Release something in the spirit as we sing. Let's go. Give me that. Give me that. 